Hello and welcome to this lesson on scalars and vectors, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at trying to define and sum scalars and vectors. So if we've been successful and we've learned in this lesson, we should be able to describe the differences between scalar and vector quantities, add vector and scalar quantities, and draw vector diagrams for vectors where the size and the direction of the arrow represents the size and the direction of the vector. So we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQA A level physics specification 3.4.1.1 scalars and vectors. So scalars are quantities which only have a magnitude or a size associated with them, and this includes the following quantities, mass, temperature, time, energy, and length. Now all these quantities have a magnitude, but they do not have a direction that they act in, they just exist. Now vectors are quantities which have a magnitude and a direction associated with them. So this includes the following quantities, things like weight, momentum, velocity, force, acceleration. So all these quantities have a magnitude and a direction they act in. So to recap, scalars are quantities which have only a magnitude or size associated with them, whilst vectors are quantities with a magnitude and a direction associated with them. So we've got to treat these concepts differently both mathematically and conceptually. Now it's important to note that some quantities have both a scalar and a vector counterpart. So in these examples, the vector is a scalar with the direction added. So the most common examples will be speed being a scalar and velocity being the vector counterpart and distance traveled being the scalar and displacement being the vector counterpart. So these vectors are scalar values with a direction included in the answer. Now the easiest way to add a direction is to place a plus or a minus sign in front of the value. So for example, plus 20 meters per second and minus 20 meters per second show velocities where the objects are moving in opposite directions. Now the direction of a vector can also be given as an angle from either the vertical or the horizontal axes. And the direction of a vector can also be given as a bearing. Now remember, bearings always measure the angles clockwise from the north. So in physics, there are two types of quantities. Scalars, such as speed, which have a magnitude, but with no direction associated with them. So they can be fully described by only a number and a unit, for example, eight meters per second. Now a vector is a quantity which is only fully specified when a magnitude and a direction are given. Now it's not sufficient to know that a force has a magnitude of 300 newtons, we need to state the direction in which the force acts in. So for example, a force of 300 newtons acting horizontally in a direction 30 degrees east of north. So like we said, you've got scalars, which are things like mass, temperature, time, distance, speed, and energy, and you've got vectors, things like displacement, force, velocity, acceleration, and momentum. Now to add any two vectors, you must draw what we call a scale diagram. Now these diagrams accurately show the size and the direction of an overall vector. So you can see in this particular diagram, this is an example of a scale diagram. Now the overall vector can sometimes be called the resultant vector. And the resultant vector is the sum of the first vector and the second vector. Because remember, resultant in physics means the overall or the observed value. Now you can't just add vectors to each other. So the resultant vector is the straight line distance from the start of this diagram to the finish. So to draw a scale diagram, the first thing you've got to do is set a scale to your work. So for example, you may say one square on this page is equal to one Newton. So you draw in the first vector with the correct length and direction. Remember to draw the arrowhead of your vector, that's very important. Now you would then draw the second vector with the correct length and the direction. Now it's important that you place the tail of this vector at the head of the previous vector. The, another name actually for a scale diagram is a head to tail diagram because it's the head of one vector touching the tail of the other. Now you can see that here. Then the resultant vector is the tail of the vector one to the head of vector two, the start of the diagram to the end of the diagram. So it's very important you would draw that in and draw the arrowhead of your vector. You will then measure the length of the vector with a ruler and then the angle with the protractor. You'll convert the length of your result 
resultant vector back into the scale by using your conversion. Now again, when you're given your angle, remember to give your angle for, uh, to start from where the angle is measured from. So either say it's, a, it's an angle from the horizontal or from the vertical. Now in most cases, it's easier to measure the angle from the vertical as opposed to the horizontal, but not in every case. So, just to clarify, to add vectors, you must draw a scale diagram. Now, these diagrams accurately show the size and the direction of the overall vector. So, you've got to set a scale to your work. Draw the first vector with the correct length and direction, then draw the second vector with the correct length and direction, placing the tail of this vector at the head of the previous vector. The resultant vector is from the tail of vector 1 to the head of vector 2. You will then measure the length of the vector with a ruler and the angle with the protractor and convert values back with your scale. Now you may have realised in the previous example we've drawn a right angle triangle with the two vectors. So this means you could actually calculate the length of the resultant vector with the theory of Pythagoras and calculate the angle of the vector using trigonometry. But this can only work if the two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So from Pythagoras you can say that the resultant vector squared is equal to vector 1 squared plus vector 2 squared and that the angle is that tan of the angle is vector 2 over vector 1. Now this comes from Sokotoa for, so for, that, for any right angle triangle where you know the two sides you can work out the size of the angle because you can say sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, like we mentioned before, the Pythagoras method can only be used if the two vectors are at right angles to each other. But you can use this information if you do have your two vectors perpendicular to each other to work out the size of the resultant vector and the angle of that resultant vector. So here's an example of the calculation using this method. So you can say if vector 1 is 12 newtons and vector 2 is 8 newtons, well then the resultant vector squared is 12 squared plus 8 squared, so it equals 208. Square root that to get your resultant vector is 14 newtons and then that tan of the angle is vector 2 over vector 1 so it's 8 over 12 it's opposite over adjacent it's 0 0.67 which is 34 degrees from the vertical now if you have two vectors which are not at 90 degrees to each other you can still add them by the scale diagram method so you could say your scale in this case was one centimeter equals one newton and then to find the resultant vector you use the parallelogram of forces so you have vector one and vector two the first thing you would do is you would draw in the same length vector as vector one with the same angle on the opposite side of vector two so you reflect in vector one you would then reflect vector 2, so you draw the same length vector as vector 2 with the same angle on the opposite side of vector 1. We have now created our parallelogram of forces. You then draw in a resultant vector from the start of the vectors to where the new two lines meet up. Then to find the size of the resultant vector, you measure the vector with a ruler and then convert it to a value with a scale. So to find the direction of the resultant vector, you would then measure the angle with the protractor. So to summarise what we've learned in today's lesson, we should understand nature, the nature of scalars and vectors. We should know examples of scalars and vectors including velocity and speed, mass, force and weight, acceleration, displacement and distance. And you should be able to add vectors by calculation or by doing the scale drawing. Now calculations will be limited to two vectors at right angles, but scale diagrams, say so scale drawings may involve vectors at angles other than 90 degrees. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the differences between scalars and vectors add vectors and scalars, and then finally draw vector diagrams for vectors where the size and the direction of the arrow represents the size and the direction of the vector. So thank you very much for listening to this particular lesson on scalars and vectors, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.